Howdy folks. So a few days ago, uh, we had a lightning storm in my city and uh, one of my friends uh, had a plasma TV plugged in and it wasn't on a surge protector. And uh, long story short, uh, it got struck by lightning and doesn't work anymore. So uh, he handed it off to me to see if I could uh, repair it rather than replace the TV because it's a relatively new, it's only about three years old. It was the absolute last generation of Samsung plasma TVs. And uh, it's a nice big TV, so obviously it's worth fixing rather than replacing. So um, anyway, I uh, I went actually I actually went over to his house and I picked up just the power supply board. Uh, I didn't want to drag this huge TV around, so uh, of course my initial thought was, um, you know, surge probably took out the power supply. That makes the most sense because of course you push the power button on the TV and absolutely nothing happens. It's just totally dead. So. Uh, this is the power supply for it. I don't actually remember the model of the TV, by the way, uh, unfortunately. It doesn't really matter. Um, so this is the sort of generic power supply. Um, we've got our mains input here. Um, we've got a fuse which was not blown, um, which was interesting. I, I, I kind of expected this to be blown. Uh, I expected something to have gone short and blown this, but that's not what happened. Um, we have some filtering, common mode chokes, we have some NTCs for inrush over here. Um, we've got our main tank caps over here, uh, some big inductors. These are our two main switching transistors. The bridge rectifier is under here behind this, what I'm going to call a, an afterthought heatsink because it really looks like they uh, needed just a bit extra cooling and they uh, put that on sort of after they designed this because that's kind of doesn't look too good to me. Got our main tra switching transformer over here. This looks like a, a standby transformer. And then just sort of output regulation over here. And it's got two main power connectors. This one here. This is the, uh, the logic board connector over here. So uh, pretty standard. And on the back side, we've just... Uh, I just put my hand in uh, a bunch of flux residue. That's wonderful. Um, yeah, because I, I actually ended up desoldering some parts off of this. We have our main uh, Samsung custom proprietary switch mode controller chip where there's absolutely no data on this part. Um, you can get a pinout for this, but uh, no other data other than that. Um, so of course if that dies, you're totally screwed. And then uh, there's some double diodes and stuff over here. And uh, there is a PIC microcontroller. Actually, no, it's not a PIC. It is a microchip branded microcontroller, but it is not branded as a PIC. So um, this is obviously the system controller for this board. And uh, it's all over here on the low voltage side. You can see the isolation here. You can see all the uh, opto isolators here. Um, what was kind of interesting on this board is the, the, the number of these spark gaps they had. They had uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There were eight spark gaps on this board which seems quite quite a lot. I'm kind of surprised at the number of, of these gaps. So um, they don't appear to have any charring on them, so I don't think the surge was strong enough to uh, cause these to arc over, because I suspect if those arced over, something would probably be dead on this board. Um, so anyway, I've already done uh, most of the work on this repair, so I'm just kind of going over what I've done. Um, I didn't bother to film it because uh, I didn't know how long this would take and again the whole filming takes time kind of thing. So uh, I basically plugged this in and uh, my power meter showed 3 watt draw which um, isn't terribly much so it, it, it could have been running, it could have not been running. So the first thing I did of course just tested the outputs and this thing outputs 5.3 and 15 volts both of which were dead. So um, I checked basically the primary side, so up to these two big uh, filter caps, which should have um, you know, nominally like 170 volts or so on them. They had 160 volts on them. So um, of course we had our main DC, so that tells us all the filtering's working, the bridge rectifier's working, all that stuff. And our switching transistors here, um, I dug the, uh, the, uh, the potting compound out from around them. Uh, just to check them out, take the take these off to see what they were. And these are switching FETs, and they had the full, um, sort of, I'm going to call it B plus across them. And uh, but there was no gate drive, so I ended up checking the uh, the gate drive circuitry, which is over here. And uh, that's when I actually ended up desoldering two parts just to check some stuff uh, out of circuit. 
and uh, all this gate drive stuff was fine. So I traced it back to the uh, IC and the IC wasn't generating any output. So of course, whenever something's not generating any output, you make sure it has a power supply. So with the pinout that I had, which was all the data I had, um, I could verify that there was no power supply to this chip. So of course that explains that. And so I slowly traced the power supply uh, down through here, through all these devices, up to one of these opto isolators, and I traced the signal all the way back to this controller I see over here. And this one was getting a supply. This one was getting a, uh, a 5.25 volt supply. And uh, that didn't make a lot of sense to me um, because I measured and there were no supplies on, uh, on that connector. So I measured it again. And uh, there is a standby um, uh, output on this connector. And it was there, it was 5.3 volts. So maybe the first time I measured it, my probes touched each other and it shorted out the supply and it overcurrented or something. Um, because I swear I measured that and it was zero last time. So it had a, a standby supply. And so I, um, I actually shorted the power supply on pin and the thing came to life. So uh, the thing was functional the whole time and I spent far longer than I should have um, reverse engineering this uh, when I should have just measured twice. But anyway, the power supply is fine, so that's good. So I uh, set that thing aside and I ended up going back and getting the, uh, the main logic board because obviously, obviously what was wrong was the... Um, the main logic board was obviously not giving that power supply on signal um, because of course the power supply wasn't coming on, my power meter wasn't registering anything higher than sort of the quiescent current of this power supply. And uh, this is basically what's directly plugged into it. It's got the, um, I think it's the Y drive on, uh, is also connected to this connector over here, but I didn't really care about that. Um, that, would, that wouldn't be something that would have gone because the TV was off when the surge happened. So uh, it, of course it would have been this thing that would have had the standby supply going to it uh, during that. And of course the standby supply works. So um, you know the damage uh, was going to be on this, and I, I really didn't know what to expect. I I uh, I thought you know worst case scenario it's one of these custom Samsung parts, right? Where you, you know you basically have to replace the whole board at that point. Or what would have been really nice is maybe like a Pico fuse or something like that. That was uh, my thought. Uh, at first, but upon inspection of the board, there are no Pico fuses on this board, none actually whatsoever. So this uh, diagnosing this was a little interesting. So I plugged this into the, uh, the power supply and uh, I plugged it in. And the first thing I, I saw was as soon as I plugged the power supply into, into the mains, this thing started drawing 40 watts, which is the idle power consumption of this power supply. So something on this board was sending the power on signal immediately after I plugged it in. Uh, but there were no LEDs on this board, none of the, like nothing was lighting up on this board. And this is the, uh, the, the, the power button. It's, it's kind of a joystick type thing with a volume and channel stuff on it. So um, there's an LED on this uh, right on here. There's the IR sensor here, and then there's a little red LED here which shines through the front of the TV and that wasn't on. So the board looked completely dead, but um, it was obviously something was alive enough to send that power on signal. So I could have sort of, you know, traced this out for a while and um, I started basically whenever you've got processors, first thing to check is check are the oscillators running. So I got my scope out and I scoped out both of the crystals and um, this one was doing some really funky stuff. It was kind of starting and stopping. And uh, this one, the amplitude was changing all over the place and the frequency was wrong. Um, very strange um, what was coming out of these crystals. So I got out my, um, my thermal camera because thermal cameras are amazing at diagnosing things. And uh, again, like I recommend, don't buy a Seek thermal camera, buy a Fleur or something um, because the, the new app that Seek has released is absolute turd, and it makes the camera worse than it was before, which was already a turd. So seriously, don't waste your money on that camera. Um, I only use it because I already purchased it. Um, buy something else because that company does not understand how to make a product that doesn't suck. 
Anyway, uh, bashing uh, seek aside, I got out the thermal camera and I looked at this board while it was plugged in, and the entire board um, was completely cold. Uh, there wasn't any hint of anything on this board except for one spot right over here where you can see I've done some work. And it was getting mighty hot. It was about 60 degrees. And it was just a little tiny part. Uh, it was a SOT 23. And uh, in fact, it was this SOT 23 right here. This thing was about 60 degrees. And everything else was completely cold. So, of course, naturally, um, I'm going to uh, gravitate towards that part. And it was marked on the silk screen as an IC. And uh, of course, the the SO, uh, the SOT23 is kind of mostly used for transistors and diodes, but of course you can put an IC in it, and um, it's labeled as an IC, so that kind of rules out it's being a diode or a transistor. And the, you know, what kind of ICs really can you have with three pins, right? You've probably got power, ground, and one pin, so logic tells me, um, you know, just kind of from uh, experience that this is a voltage regulator, a linear voltage regulator. So it has a marking on it. Um, I think it's a 161J. And I looked that up for a while and I was not able to find anything online. But uh, I was still pretty sure that it was a, a voltage regulator of some kind. And uh, the three pins were the 5.3 volt standby ground and some pin that was connected to something. I never bothered to trace it any further. I didn't really need to. So. Under power, um, the output of this regulator uh, was 2.5 volts, and I wasn't sure if this was uh, correct or not, because of course 2.5 volts is a valid core voltage for some uh, processors, so I wasn't ruling that out, and it was, you know, it was exactly 2.5 volts, but uh, that didn't seem right to me because this thing, of course, made by Samsung or Shamsung, whatever you want to call them, um, this is going to be as cheap as absolutely possible, which means they're probably going to be using 3.3 volt logic because, um, of course, that reduces, reduces cost. And uh, probably, probably a bunch of these other chips are 3.3 volts, so having two regulators is, again, kind of why would you do that? And uh, there is a test point uh, all the way over on this side of the board that actually references 3.3 volts. So once I saw that, I sort of thought, okay, there's something wrong here. And is it either uh, the regulator doesn't work or is something on the power rail shorted or has gone low resistance that's pulling down the voltage and overloading the regulator and is that why it's getting so hot? So really there's no way to tell uh, other than to take the regulator off the board. So that's what I did. I, I took the regulator off the board and of course now plugging this thing in to mains, this doesn't do anything. The power supply doesn't start up. That makes sense. So I can't really test this thing out of circuit easily. So uh, I just soldered, soldered, I actually couldn't find my mod wire. So I soldered these giant ass solid core wires on here, um, which looks kind of ridiculous. Um, normally I'd use small mod wire, but I cannot find my bag of mod wire. Um, so basically I just have one for ground and one for the output, which is this red wire here. And so I connected this up to one of my current limited power supplies and uh, I started at 2.5 volts and at 2.5 volts it was drawing about 100 milliamps or so and of course nothing was happening. So I increased the voltage uh, slowly and as I did uh, the current went up and at about 3 volts I saw the red LED come on in this module and by the time I hit 3.3 volts we were drawing about 180 milliamps and uh, you know it looked like it was working. So as soon as I plugged in this supply, the main supply, um, the board actually booted up. Um, the diagnostic LED started flashing, the, uh, the power LED started flashing, the uh, laser and the optical audio transceiver came on, um, the thermal camera showed all these chips were getting warm, and uh, it started to respond by flashing the LED when I started pushing buttons. So it appeared that the whole thing was working uh, as I was supplying that external 3.3 um, volt supply. And uh, I, monitored the, I monitored the current, it stayed pretty consistent at 3.3 volts or, and at about 180, 185 milliamps or so, which is okay. Um, so at that point I pretty much had to conclude that the regulator was bad. So 
I didn't, uh, of course, I didn't know what this regulator was, so I looked up uh, to see if I could get a replacement, and I managed to find one by uh, Diodes Inc. They have a SOT23 regulator um, that has the same pinout. They have like a reverse um, pinout version um, that has the same the same footprint, and uh, it's it works up to 300 milliamps, which I didn't even think you could get 300 milliamps uh, out of a package this small, but uh, apparently you can. So I've ordered that part at 60 cents. Um, so actually I've ordered two of them just in case I somehow cock it up and lose one or something like that. Um, and yeah, that should be a perfect drop-in replacement and uh, that'll get this thing up and running again. So. Yeah, um, really, sixty cents is all all it was. Um, the lightning strike must have overloaded uh, that that regulator. Um, probably exceeded the input voltage uh, is probably my best guess. And luckily, that took the brunt of it, and it didn't get into this chip um, because it seems that this regulator powers just this chip. Um, and of course, this thing is irre irre irreparable. So um, I'm glad it was a regulator and not this thing. Now. Uh, the output of this regulator, of course, it wasn't completely dead, it wasn't totally short, it wasn't totally open, it was outputting 2.5 volts, and it was pretty stable at 2.5. So what I think might have been going on, um, it was kind of like 2.5, 2. yeah, 2.5, 2.55, somewhere around there. Um, the, the difference between 2.55 and 3.3 is about uh, 0.75 of a volt, which is about that of a, a PN junction, a diode drop. So my guess, um, totally a guess, uh, as to what actually happened in this chip is that there's probably a diode in, of course it's an IC, there's probably a diode somewhere that probably went short due to the, the voltage or, or current spike, and as a result it's now regulating lower by a diode drop and that's why um, that's why it's not uh, it's not the correct output voltage. Either that, or something internally has gone short, and it's dissipating a lot of power, and the thing is going into thermal protection, and it's it's doing sort of a constant current output um, to limit to like 100 milliamps or something, and that's why it's uh, it's not reaching the proper voltage. Anyway, it doesn't really matter. The chip is dead, so uh, I'm just going to uh, solder in a uh, a new replacement once it comes. And uh, I'll put the TV back together and I'll uh, let you know if it uh, worked out.